At the plutonium finishing plant on the Department of Energy's Hanford site in southeast Washington state, employees are about to make history by entering one of the site's most historic rooms. It, it's a pride thing. Um, it's very interesting work. Keeps you on your toes. Um, and you can look back and say, I was involved with that. I participated in that. Fifty years ago, in 1964, newspapers heralded the opening of the Amarisim Recovery Facility. The building, numbered 242Z, was built to capture americium from processes at the plutonium finishing plant. The plant was the last stop in Hanford's plutonium production process. Today, part of the 242Z facility is known as the McCluskey Room, named after Harold McCluskey. He was a nuclear chemical operator severely injured in 1976 when an explosion occurred as nitric acid was added to a column containing resin and americium. The accident shattered glove box windows and left shards of plastic on the ground. It sprayed McCluskey with nitric acid and radioactive americium. He received 500 times the dose deemed safe. McCluskey survived and died at age 75 in 1987 of unrelated causes. The facility never operated again. It was too contaminated and too hazardous to enter and stay for long periods of time. Few entries occurred over the years until 2010. A mess. It was bad. It just old, dilapidated, run down. Um, just looked like a war zone. Four years ago, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funding allowed the Department of Energy and CH2M Hill employees to enter the McCluskey room. Dirt everywhere, filth, everything was, the glove boxes were just completely covered. All the paint and the old uh, plaster on the walls was hanging off. It just looked bad. Funding allowed crews to safely make more than 220 entries and remove two glove boxes. During the four years since, demolition preparations progressed inside the rest of the plutonium finishing plant, with most of the glove boxes and pencil-shaped process tanks removed. There has been a lot of work that's been accomplished over the past several years to get the plutonium finishing plant to where it is today. So. We have about two-thirds of the facility ready for demolition, and yet what lies ahead of us is some of the most challenging and difficult activities that have yet to be completed that are probably some of the most difficult work going on not only here at the Hanford site, but across the country for that matter. The plutonium finishing plant demolition schedule means it's now time to re-enter the McCluskey room to finish decontamination, remove the remaining glove boxes, pipes, and tanks, and prepare that portion of the plutonium finishing plant for demolition. We have a very important milestone ahead of us to safely clean out and demolish all of the buildings that make up the plutonium finishing plant by September of 2016. And we intend to do our best to meet that challenge. When employees enter the McCluskey room this year, they will wear suits and respirators never before used on the Hanford site to ensure they remain safe when they enter this hazardous and historic room. Plutonium finishing plant employees first saw similar technology in 2013. A lot of us went to Idaho Falls to see how this suit was used there. Um, that was a really good experience for a lot of us. After employees saw the respirators and suits during an information exchange at Idaho's Advanced Mixed Waste Treatment Project, the Department of Energy, CH2M Hill, and the workers who visited Idaho agreed to adopt that type of equipment for use in 242Z. The workers came back, um, they liked it, so they've been training on it and mocking up uh, extensively with it and doing modifications to make it applicable in our situation. The new supplied air respirators have a mechanism that generates cool air inside the heavy suit, increasing safety by protecting employees from heat stress. It also allows an employee to stay inside 242Z longer, about two hours compared to only 45 minutes with the older equipment. This is a really good thing. I mean, it, it gives people better protection, and I think it's a really easy way to get people in and out. Workers inside the suits will be able to communicate better with support staff outside. Instead of having the throat mics like we used to wear, now we've got a push button, which works a lot better for us. Industrial hygiene monitoring will include personal breathing zone monitors that measure conditions inside the suit and transmit that information real time to computers outside the room. When you go in to do those things, and it's just a confidence, the confidence level. Um, with this suit, you have two different deals, you have different monitoring. It's just a lot different. 
Finally, a large state-of-the-art compressor with backup tanks will ensure a safe, high-quality, continuous supply of air for the four employees inside the room, meaning no more changing air bottles for the workers. With this and this suit and setup, we should be able to work in there and get, get accomplish more work and be safer, a lot safer. Employees with the support of CH2M Hill Management and the Department of Energy not only helped select the equipment, but trained their co-workers on how to use it. Without the workers being involved with this, this would never be possible. And actually, they are the end user. They're the ones that do the work. So, you know, we have to provide the safe environment for them to work in. This employee-driven process will equip some of the most experienced employees on the Hanford site with safer and more efficient tools and technology. Very confident in the team and whoever we train to go in and my confidence level is very high when it comes to that. That will make cleanup history in a historic part of the plutonium finishing plant. With the confidence alone, it's a trust issue. Um, if you trust your PPE, then when you go in to do your work, you're not constantly saying, is there a problem, is there a problem, is there a problem, is this gonna happen, is that gonna happen? Whereas if, if you know your PPE is correct for what you're doing, you can put that aside and actually concentrate on what you're doing.